everyone, this is Colleen Lemma, Starseed Astrologer and Spiritual Messenger from SacredSoulEmpowerment.com, here to do your weekly angel card reading for Monday, January 30th through Sunday, February 5th, 2017. For this weekly reading, we're going to be using, we're going to actually be using a couple of different decks, so doing it a little bit differently this week. We're going to be using for the main message, the Gilded Tarot Deck by Barbara Moore. And for your special message card, we're going to be choosing cards depending on your stone of choice from the Goddess Oracle Deck, which is by Amy Sophia Marashinsky. Now, I also have a special message card for everyone for the week from the Angels of Atlantis Oracle Cards deck by Stuart Pierce. So, we've got a lot going on here, but let's go ahead and take a, take a look at your stones of choice for this weekly reading. Okay, so your first stone of choice is Purple Lapidolite. It's kind of a reflective um, stone. It's made up of, of, this one is made up of mica, and so this purple lapidolite, let's see if we can say it right, purple lapidolite is really good for the heart, throat, third eye, and crown chakras, so it vibrates to all of those upper chakras, and it helps to dissipate negativity, it helps to clear blockages, and it helps to bring cosmic awareness, which is that uh, universal source god energy of the crown chakra. So again, this is purple lapidolite. Your second stone of choice is yellow aventurine. Now the yellow aventurine is going to vibrate mostly to the solar plexus chakra and it helps with prosperity, it helps with leadership, it helps with your sense of willpower, those are all things of the solar plexus chakra. It also helps to alleviate grief energy. So if you're grieving anything, um, this is going to help with that. On a physical body level, it helps to remove toxins. And it also helps to stabilize the mental and the emotional bodies together. So they're um, in, a, in a nice balance with each other. Okay, so again, that was the yellow aventuring. The last stone of choice is red calcite. And the red calcite is going to vibrate mostly to our root chakra. And this is going to be helpful in increasing our physical energy and balancing the base chakra, the root chakra, which is issues of stability and security. Now, interestingly enough, it also helps to uplift the emotions and helps to open the heart chakra. This is going to be good for helping to remove any stagnant energies or uh, energy blockages within the physical and emotional bodies as well. So again, your stones of choice for your special message card are the purple lapidolite, the yellow aventurine, and the red calcite. So let's talk a little bit about the astrology for the week before we take a look at the messages from the cards today. So when we look at Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, and you know we're taking all three of those days together because Mercury, which is still in the sign of Capricorn, is actually challenging Uranus on Tuesday and then moving forward Wednesday and Thursday to challenge Jupiter. So when I say challenge, it means that astrologically we're talking about a square aspect. Mercury squares Uranus. And then it's going to move forward and square Jupiter, which is forming actually what's called a T-square in astrology. So the focal planet here is Mercury, which is the faster moving of the planets. And again, it's making that challenging aspect to Uranus and Aries. And Uranus and Aries is opposing Jupiter and Libra, which, by the way, is slowing down. And it's going to be getting ready to go retrograde uh, motion here very shortly in the first half of February. So what is this all about? Well, Mercury is the planet of the mental realm. It deals with our thoughts, our ideas, the way we think, the way we communicate. And Uranus is the planet uh, about being rebellious and being um, shocking 
and it's freedom. And in the sign of Aries, it's about blazing a new trail and it's higher dimensional energy. And that again is posing Jupiter in Libra. And Jupiter is the planet of expansion and our belief systems. And it's in that sign of partnerships, relationships. So what I feel like with this configuration on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday is that there's going to be some maybe unexpected communications that happen between people. Now this could be relationships of a romantic level, a business level, a family level, a friendship level. But I feel like we're going to have some maybe unexpected uh, communications, but some also very needed communications. Maybe something has been building up for a while and it's time to really just get it out. So I would say try to use that Jupiter and Libra energy to be as balanced as possible and stay balanced about your belief systems regarding relationships and just be very grounded um, and practical uh, with your communications. Try to be calm and balanced. And, uh, you know, and I say that because with Mercury squaring Uranus, uh, it doesn't really uh, bode for calm <laughs> and practical kind of communications. It's more like, okay, I can't hold this in any longer and I'm going to spurt it out kind of thing. Now, on the other hand, this can be really good for business too. You know, it's like um, troubleshooting and coming up with new ideas and just kind of, you know, letting yourself or letting other people know what those new kind of ideas or belief systems might be. But nonetheless, I feel like this can be a positive thing, but I also feel like, again, there might be some unexpected uh, things that are happening on the communication level with that. Also on Thursday, the moon is in Aries, which is the first sign of the zodiac. And the moon in Aries can bring up emotions that are more, a little bit frustrating. And it can also be emotionally reactive because the moon is about our emotions, but Aries is a very reactive fire sign. And on Thursday, the moon in Aries actually connects with Pluto, and then it connects with Uranus, and then it connects with Mercury, and then it connects with Jupiter, and then it connects with Saturn. Now, a lot of these aspects are what we would call astrologically challenging aspects, but once we get to Saturn, even though Saturn we usually think of as a heavy planet, the moon in Aries is actually making a positive aspect to Saturn in the end. So whatever is going on, throughout the day or that time period where it's connecting to all of, those, all of those planets. There's a lot of transformation and redirection that's taking place, changes in our belief systems and communicating about it. And I feel like it, in the end it's all stable. I feel like in the end we can come back into a sense of uh, maybe balance and we've learned a few things and we're uh, feeling a little bit more calm about it all. The only other thing happening this week is Friday the 3rd of February. And Venus moves into the sign of Aries. Now, last week, I believe it was, we had Mars moving into the sign of Aries. Now, most of the month of January was kind of confusing and, and emotionally uh, difficult in a lot of ways because a lot of planets were in the sign of Pisces. And Pisces is a very emotional water sign. And it can also deal with the past and things that uh, happened in previous incarnations, so karmic patterns from the past. And it brought up all of this emotional stuff. Now, it, it needed to bring the emotional stuff up to the surface so that we could let it go and start to heal it. But it, could, it was still probably a challenging energy for a lot of people to deal with. But now that we have Mars is already in Aries, the first sign of the zodiac. Venus is moving into Aries on the 3rd of February. And later in the month... Well, actually, it's not this month, but actually later in March, we will have the uh, the sun moving into Aries, too. So this is an energy of new beginnings. Aries is the first sign, so it's about new birth, new beginnings, new directions, um, and starting something new. Now, because it's Venus moving into Aries, this is the divine feminine. And this is actually one of the reasons why I chose the goddess oracle deck for our special message card, because... Venus rules the divine feminine, and in Aries, she's very strong. She's very independent. She's very self-sufficient. She's uh, very courageous and kind of blazing a new trail or starting a new path. She's, she's rising up strong, so to speak. So I feel like we're going to have you know, a little bit more sense of self-assuredness and confidence as we move forward with now both Venus and Mars in the sign of Aries. Okay, that's a little bit about the astrology for the week. Let's take a look at 
what our angels and guides tell us for the week from the Gilded Tarot here. All right, so we turn over the first tarot card, <clears throat> excuse me, and we have the Four of Swords. You can see these are very colorful, beautiful cards. Now, the sword suit is about the mental realm, our thoughts, our ideas, how we communicate. And the number four, I always think of a box, you know, a geometric shape of a box with four corners. And I always feel, you know, don't box yourself in is what I feel with this. Now, this is this is kind of containing your thoughts, or this is kind of a weighing down your mental uh, thoughts. And if you can see the image in this card, we have uh, a young man who's lying down here. It actually looks like he's resting or sleeping. And I feel like when I see this that we have been maybe a little burdened by our thoughts, um, maybe with our communications with others too, but definitely within our, within our uh, internal thought processes in the mental realm. I feel like we've maybe some of us has been a little depressed or some of us have been challenged by uh, again our, our thoughts or ideas or, or belief systems about things and that's all the mental realm stuff and I feel like here we're needing to take a break you know kind of take a rest rejuvenate um, allow ourselves to uh, come into a sense of mental healing and mental rebalancing uh, in the beginning of the week or maybe for the whole week entirely. And um, I, I feel like we need to actually look at the second card to see if we can get more of an idea of how the week might unfold or what this might be all about. But again, I feel like we've been dealing with a lot or feeling overburdened on a mental level. And it's just this time where we need to kind of step back and clear our heads and, you know, again, take some alone time and, and, and get some rest um, because things actually may not be as bad or as challenging as you may originally think. But let's go ahead and take a look at the second card and see if we can get additional information. All right. Okay. So the second card is actually a four card as well, but this is the four of cups. And so now we're in the emotional realm here. And okay, so again, you know, you have this image of this box and boxing yourself in, not only mentally, but emotionally too. So you might feel a little trapped both on the mental level and the emotional level. You might feel a little challenged on the mental level and the emotional level. Usually the four of cups is about missing an opportunity or not opening your heart chakra to allow that flow of unconditional love that can bring the blessings to you. Now oftentimes this does deal with our feelings and our relationships and matters of love with other people. So again, there's something here to where if you look at the imagery, this young man is sitting up, uh, looks like against a tree, and he's being offered one cup here, but he doesn't look very excited about you know, taking that offer. And the fact of the matter is, is there's three cups also over here and they're all upright. They're all standing upright, but he's not even looking that way. He's not even seeing them. And that's why this is about potentially a missed opportunity. You're kind of boxing yourself in emotionally, maybe feeling depressed or feeling frustrated or feeling upset or or lonely or whatever it might be and you're not really recognizing that there's opportunities all around you some of them are over here some of them are over there and actually there's one bright big cup here that's actually looks like it's being offered by a hand here the hand of the universe is offering this young man uh, a great big blessing but I feel like he's so um, boxed in mentally and emotionally uh, especially with that fir first card, the Four of Swords being on the mental level and this, the Four of Cups being on the emotional level, that he's not able to open up and see that opportunity. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the last card. And remember, towards the end of the week, Friday is where Venus moves into Aries. So let's hope that this is a positive indication of that. Aha, we do have a positive indication of that. The Ace of Cups, this is great. The Ace of Cups, again, this is on the emotional level. And you can see that in this imagery, we have this beautiful big gold cup. Um, we actually have the cycles of the moon here. So this is actually telling me that this is the beginning of a cycle to where we're going to feel um, 
a lot more joyous, a lot more happy on the emotional level. But again, it might take this cycle of time, a moon cycle, which is usually a month's time to go through the new, the new moon and the full moon. Um, I feel like, again, we're in this new beginning. The ace is a new beginning. And again, the cups is the emotion. So we're in a new beginning of a way of feeling. And this new beginning is going to bring us a lot more clarity and a lot more peace and a lot more ability to feel joy and happiness within our lives. So I feel like, again, as we get towards that uh, Venus moving into Aries at the end of the week, I feel like this is when the birth of that new way of feeling starts to begin because, again, we're moving out of that Piscean energy. And with um, Mars moving out of Pisces and into Aries and Venus moving out of Pisces and into Aries, it's going to feel a lot uh, lighter. It's going to feel a lot uh, like we have more direction and more clarity with things and we're not feeling so heavy on the emotional level. Let's go ahead and take a look at the special message card for everybody from the Angels of Atlantis deck and see what the overall message and what angels guiding us for the week. Okay, so Archangel Uriel seems to be guiding us for this week. Um, this is a card with Archangel Uriel and the message at the bottom says freedom. Okay, and we have this image of this uh, man, this person who looks like he's just having a blast. He's having fun. He's waving his arms. Maybe he's dancing. He just feels like he's breaking free of some of the old heavy energies and looking up to the heavens and look at all the stars. Look at all the blessings here with all the stars that are around this planet here in the center and all of these wonderful uh, colors, the amethyst colors of opening the crown chakra to higher guidance, the yellow color that he's wearing, which is sense of courage and willpower and self-expression. And he really is expressing himself. He's expressing himself with joy and that happiness and creativity and freedom. Now, Archangel Uriel is an archangel that can help us a lot with our belief systems to release any lower vibrational thoughts or belief systems and kind of break free of that heaviness on the mental level. So call in Archangel Uriel for assistance this week if you need help with that. But again, I feel like we're moving into a time towards the end of the week and, and, and further on out where we're going to feel a lot more free and um, things are going to start I don't know if I want to say looking up because I don't know if this is external as much as it is internal. I feel like there's an internal shift that's going on within us. All right, so let's take a look at your special message card. And this is from a goddess oracle that I have used before, but I don't use it often because quite honestly, I have a difficult time with some of the names of the goddesses and pronouncing them correctly. So I actually have the Goddess Oracle book next to me so that if I have trouble, I want to be able to let you all know what the proper pronunciation of the goddess is because some of these goddesses are not, uh, not mainstream, okay? And I also want to be able to tell you where that goddess energy stems from. So here we have the Goddess Oracle. So we're going to give this a little bit of a shuffle and calling in not only the goddesses, that divine feminine energy of Venus, but also calling in our angels and our guides, our archangels. And this one's actually popping up. So for those of you that chose the Lapidolite, the Lapidolite people is Newt. Okay, I can pronounce that one. That's pretty easy. So Newt actually here is a goddess of mystery. So the message for you this week is to Right away, I get a sense that there's things going on behind the scenes that you don't, you're not aware of. You don't know what they are yet. And I feel like that's a part of the mystery. So I feel like for you, um, bless the mystery. Don't feel like, oh, well, I can't see the blessings or I can't see this thing unfolding in my life that I want. And here, this goddess Newt is saying to bless the mystery, to honor the mystery, and to know that there are things going on behind the scenes and that they will come to fruition. They are coming to fruition. It's, it's happening on the spiritual realm first. And to pay attention to your dreams, they're saying, to pay attention to visions that you might get, 
uh, in your daytime meditation because those are going to be signs to you of that mystery unfolding. Now I also get a sense that there's something about the moon cycle associated here because there's three globes around Newt or above Newt's head and that makes me think of you know the moon basically and going through certain moon cycles and they're reminding me right now that we're going to be entering a time period to where we're going to have a full moon lunar eclipse and a new moon solar eclipse uh, within February. So I feel like this is a powerful part of that mystery unfolding for you. Now she has this image above her crown chakra. So this is also saying to open up to uh, the divine blessings of the universe, to open up to divine guidance of the universe. Um, I feel like you're needing to they're saying to also open your heart chakra. So there's something about the connection between the crown and the heart chakra and needing to balance those together and open yourselves up to whatever blessings that's indicated by all these stars around here. And just like uh, the Archangel Uriel card had a lot of stars in it, so does this one, which to me indicates the hope, you know, your dreams coming to fruition and the blessings of the universe showering down upon you. So I take this as a very good sign for you uh, Lapidolite people. Let's take a look at the goddess message for those of you that chose the yellow adventuring. Okay, so asking what goddess message is for yellow adventuring. I'm just kind of shuffling here and asking. This one's calling my attention. Okay, this one... Okay, so this I feel like I need to perhaps look up just for a minute as far as how to pronounce that. I'm going to say, is it Ishel? It seems like I had this from a different goddess deck last week uh, when we did either the monthly reading or the uh, weekly reading from last week. But this one here is pronounced, if I can find it here, there it is. It's pronounced Ishel, okay, and she's actually uh, a Mayan goddess. She's the moon snake goddess of the Mayas, or the Mayan culture. And the message on the bottom of this one says creativity, okay? So this goddess is telling you that it's time to tap into your creative gifts, your creative talents. Um, I feel like here, uh, as I'm looking at the symbology here, I don't know why this comes to my mind, but I feel like this is you weaving your own fate. Uh, you know, that actually is a spider totem, so uh, maybe that resonates for some of you as far as having spider as a totem, because that's about weaving your own fate through, the, through creation and magic. And I get that sense with uh, Ishelle here and creativity. Again, interestingly enough, uh, there's a, she's like standing in front of this great big full moon, so again, with the full moon lunar eclipse coming up in February, that might be particularly significant to uh, some of you. The full moon in February actually is in the sign of Leo, which is a very creative sign, interestingly enough. So this is going to bring something to a head creatively for you. I'd say it's a really good time in the next a uh, few weeks here, at least the next couple of weeks, first part of February, to be working on any creative projects, um, putting your energy into something, and feeling confident about it. Uh, again, you're weaving your own fate, so make sure that you put that effort out appropriately so that you can uh, advance whatever it is you're working on, whether it be a project, a career, an idea, a relationship, etc. All right, and then for those of you that chose the red calcite, so let's take a shuffle here and ask our goddesses, and this one's poking up, red calcite people, Durga, I'm pretty sure I'm pronouncing that correctly, Durga. Actually, let's see where that comes from as far as, um, like, Ishel was Mayan, and Newt is actually Egyptian. Sorry, I didn't tell you that, but Newt is an Egyptian goddess. Now, Durga, Durga, if we can find that here to tell you where she comes from. Uh, Durga, okay, is actually, let's see, 
a Hindu goddess, I believe. Looks like Durga is a Hindu goddess. Now, if we look at the message on the bottom, this says it's about boundaries. Now, a couple things come to mind. Of course, I feel like you all may need to set some better boundaries for yourself with relate within relationships and maybe even just boundaries on a personal level they're saying that maybe you're taking too much on or you're trying to do too much at once which could include home and family and relationships and career and projects. So I feel like you need to kind of itemize um, what is most important right now and maybe make a list of things that you need to do with the most important things first. And, and again, kind of create that uh, better flow for yourself because if you're scattering yourself in too many directions or taking on too many things at once, you're going to feel overwhelmed. And, you know, that almost shows with Durga here. She's got six arms, you know, kind of in six hands going in di different directions here. So that kind of speaks to me as uh, multitasking, doing a lot of multitasking, but maybe not getting as much done efficiently as you would like. Now, the other feel thing I feel here is Durga is on a tiger, and that tiger is, you know, really moving forward. And I feel like you're going to be moving ahead really quickly here. Again, I feel like, um, I don't feel like you're necessarily, you know, doing too much per se, but just that it's not organized. That's what I feel like. So continue with what tasks you feel are important. You don't have to necessarily eliminate anything, but make sure you're organizing and prioritizing the tasks and your time correctly. And again, creating those boundaries, not spreading yourself too thin with other outside things. And as you do so, as you do that, I feel like this tiger, this sense of courage and confidence and forward movement is going to take you um, somewhere far and fast. So get ready because I feel like um, I feel like you're ready to I feel like you're you're approaching something or you're getting ready to claim something. I don't know if you're claiming your power back or you're claiming. Um, some sort of idea or you know a new direction for yourself but I feel like you're ready to go and I feel like it's almost like warrior energy but in a positive way to where you're ready to grasp it you know take it by the horns and really run with it so this is a really a positive indication of that for you and of of you moving forward this week so I hope you've liked this weekly uh, angel card reading or tarot card reading if you will I want to thank all of you um, for uh, all of your support, your kind comment, comments. It really does mean a lot to me. It kind of keeps me going uh, with some of the tumultuous times that we're having. So thank you all. And don't forget to watch the monthly angel card reading as well for February. That's also uh, up on my YouTube channel under Colleen Lemma. And uh, you'll get the messages for the month as well. So until we meet next week, much love and light to all of you and many, many angel blessings. Mm -hmm.